again. <laughs> Hello, how are you? We made it on. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so we had some tech issues in trying to come on, and uh, it was fun trying to figure out all the audio, but I am so excited to have Megan on for a couple of reasons. One is because she's a teacher and a health coach, so I'm excited to hear about what she has to say about what she does. But also, Megan is one of our speakers that will be joining me on August 17th at an event here in Benton Harbor, Michigan. And she's driving over here to Benton Harbor to join us on that day, and I'm really excited for you all to meet her before that day. So Megan, welcome, and I'm so happy to Thank have you, you. join me. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. This is going to be fun. I mean, I really yes. love this topic of um, limitless woman and a limitless mindset. And we both know in just starting our coaching businesses, it takes a lot of mental stamina to really keep it, it going, keep it going, but in it life does. in general, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, very much. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, before I um, before I get too far ahead of myself, I just want to remind uh -huh. everyone: if this is your first time uh, joining joining me on this channel, um, I want to introduce you to this series that I have going on on my Facebook page, um, asking women like Megan, "What does limitless woman mean to you?" And so we've had all kinds of fun conversations going on around that topic. So if you're interested in chiming in on that conversation i'd love to have you on as a guest to share your thoughts on what it means to be a limitless woman for me personally um having my daughter and sharing with her and being an example to her on what it means to live limitlessly and of course i had my own layers to peel before i got to this place but wow it's so important to teach our children what it means to live limitlessly and so on that note um I want to invite you to watch some of the other videos um, that we've done in this series and enjoy this time that we have today with Megan, if you're popping on with us to hear, or if you're a friend of Megan's and her neck of the woods, I'd love to hear from you in the, in the, in the thread here as well. Um, and yeah, so Megan, we're just going to like kind of kick it off right now with, with that question. What does a limitless woman mean to you? I think it's a really broad answer. It's, um, you said I'm a teacher and I, I should start by saying that I, I teach high school at um, a school called Troy School here. I live near Fort Wayne, Indiana, so I'm not too far away. I've lived in Elkhart and I've been to Benton Harbor and um, so I'm not too terribly far away, but um, my students um, are students don't work well in a traditional classroom. Got it. So teaching them, um, you know, teaching them my own two daughters what it means to have people have expectations for you mm. and how sometimes those expectations are really empowering. You know, I tell my students, you know, I know, I know you can do this where maybe their lives have been kind of crummy. They don't always have um, both parents in the house or any parents in the house. Um, I have students in foster care. I have students who just, you know, they've had a rough go of things. So they get a lot of counseling experience um, where I teach. Um, we focus a lot on mental health. And then once we establish a mental health program and we get them going with their, then we talk about things like government and history and things that I teach. So that portion I think is empowering to know that we're going to help you with your mental health, but then we know that you can do this. We just, you might not have been ready before. And with my own girls who, you know, don't have that situation, just teaching them things like, don't you let anybody tell you what you can't do? Because it's so, you know, it's like, oh, that was really good for a girl. I'm like, it's really good because she's really good. It's, you know, that, that whole, we throw that for a girl thing on the end. And that's just, um, I think it's interesting how much it's come to light in the last few years for me in my own life. Um, I do live in Indiana, which is very conservative. Um, I think everybody kind of knows that. And um, just the idea, I think it's so funny that I, I really, I don't like labels mm -hmm. at all. And I, you know, we have this like, oh, you're a feminist. And I'm like, don't call me names, <laughs> you know, like I don't, I'm just like, I, I think that it's, I'm no more a feminist than I am if there was like a masculinist or something like that. I just think everybody deserves a fair shake and that we, we put these limits on ourselves based on um, 
not just what the norm is, mm -hmm. but on what our past has taught us too. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's been true for me as well. You know, I, I have some really successful business people in my family, my dad and my grandpa and my brother, they all have these fantastic businesses. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like I was kind of like, you know, I'm a teacher coach, but now I'm uh, like, I have a business. Right. So, and I'm trying to keep reminding myself that, no, no, it's not just them. I can do this too. So yeah. it's a process. And I think it's yeah. definitely a, um, we have to push ourselves and grow and yeah. really challenge ourselves. So that's kind of where I am with things. Yeah. Yeah. You, you mentioned so many uh, valuable points that, oh my gosh, we could talk all day about <laughs> each of those elements really. But one of the things yeah. I do want to touch on though is uh, the label of feminist, you know? Uh -huh. And so for a long time, I wanted to call myself a feminist, but mainly it was because of, of me. It was really pretty much me training my brain to think about how I make my own decisions and I don't, you know, need or require or want someone else to tell me the decisions that I need to make. And so mm -hmm. whether it had to do with being a stay at home mom or finding a job or whatever else would be in between or outside of that, um, it's, it's the, the fact that I have choices to make in that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, my upbringing was a little bit different so that when I got to, a, to an older age where I was supposed to find my independence and make my own decisions. Um, I think I'm just, right now the song, Janet Jackson's song is playing in my head and I just played that for my daughter the other day and she's like, I don't get it. And I'm like, what, it's Janet. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves Janet Jackson, don't they? Everybody loves yeah. Janet Jackson. <laughs> I make my own decisions. <laughs> Remember that? Oh my gosh, I love that song. Yeah. But that's where my framework was coming from. But as I got older and matured in that thought process, it was like, you know, men, women, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, right. we will struggle with that from time to time. And if we don't right. have a little bit of struggle in that, then maybe we're looking at things a little bit from, from, a, high, from a high ladder or whatever right. on a pedestal. Um, so it's natural, it's normal. Um, so I prefer to label myself a humanist. I'm like, this is inclusive of everyone. I like that. I might accept that label. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, because we all go through those struggles. Um, right. My vision about this series was really kind of based on my own story and struggles and finding my identity and um, connecting with my limitless potential. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I knew there were a lot of women out there like me. Um, I was a young mom and a and a um, single mom for quite a few years. So all of those elements uh -huh. really impacted impacted that. So yeah. you mentioned with your kids too. Um, how old are your are your children? I have four kids. My oldest is nineteen, and he will be leaving for Butler in August. So he's going to be a freshman in college. For him. And then my oldest, yeah, then my oldest daughter is she's sixteen, a twelve-year-old son, and uh, he'll be thirteen in a couple weeks. So he's almost thirteen. And then I have a ten-year-old daughter. Okay. So yeah, the ages so of your children, more. you'll totally relate to this. My daughter, you know, we we come from a different era. You and I, I think I'm a few years older than you, right. but but my daughter's like. Phew, I got this. I can do that. You know, and here's me trying to yes, lift her self-esteem. Yes, and I love it. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, she's my she's my better half lifting my self-esteem. You know, she's Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just it's so great to see how our youth are are coming up in this world today with mm -hmm. the confidence that they have, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard that even with my 12-year-old son. It's funny because he was I told you I don't like I, I don't like labels, but he, you know, it's always this whole feminism thing is such a buzzword. And he's like, oh, well, a feminist, do you know what that means, Gav? And he's like, no. And I said, well, it just means that you think that girls should be able to do the same thing as boys. And he goes, well, yeah, that's just stupid. And I'm like, yeah, because they can. And he goes, well, of course they can. I mean, it didn't even register with him. I'm like, see, right. Gavin, you, you, you've got it, bud. Yes. And so he was like, I thought it was something bad. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not like that. So, oh my gosh. yeah. Such a good point because they don't identify with it. They don't. Course. They don't. 
and, so that's and good news for everyone. <laughs> it is such good news for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I love how you said it. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Yeah. So now, how does this show up for you? Maybe in uh, you talked a little bit about the work you do as a teacher, uh, mm-hmm. as a health coach. How does this kind of show up for you there? So I think as a health coach, um, one of the things that so many people are lacking is the confidence they need to be able to make the changes they want to make. And I think that's a little bit different. I mean, looking at limits that society puts on us, that's something that, you know, it's it's forced on us. But we also have these limits that we create for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And those, I think those limits are entirely based out of fear. And maybe our past, and a lot of times our past experiences Mm -hmm. too. But um, for me, I remember growing up and I was never really willing to try anything I didn't think I succeeded at. So I had this cousin and she she and I look a lot alike and um, she was fantastic basketball. Like she, like everybody knew her, she was so good. And I can remember when I was in probably about fifth grade, um, she would have been maybe eighth grade or high school or something. Mm-hmm. And I remember somebody said, oh, are you gonna play basketball like your sister? And I was, my immediate response was, I, I don't have a sister. And I was like frozen. I'm like, oh no, I can't be Amy. So that, you know, I immediately put that limit on it. I'm like, no, I can't do that. So um, I see that a lot in health coaching. People will say, well, I'd really like to, um, I'm I'm doing this sugar detox thing with some of my clients right now. And they're like, well, I'd like to do it. I just don't think I'll be successful at it. And I'm I'm like, okay, tell, tell me a little more about why that. Well, I just don't know that I can, I just don't know that I can do that. Mm. And they they, they kind of see a lot where we work through with my health coaching clients. I work through, well, let's talk about what would happen for you if you did it. And what does it mean to be successful? It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, what's your definition of success? And maybe just taking that step forward was the success you needed this time. Maybe it's not, you know, you might come to me and say, I want to lose 30 pounds. And it might be, well, Okay, well, what if you lose ten? Mm-hmm. Is that that's pretty successful? Mm-hmm. I mean, you did it. You did. You you took steps, and that process. Maybe the timeline wasn't exactly where it was supposed to be, but our definition of success and not putting those limits on ourselves to what we can actually achieve in our health, or um, you know, I, I tend to jump to like sugar, eating sugar, and weight loss a lot because it's kind of my bread and butter. Mm-hmm. But even I've had a lot of clients that come to me that are just like, can you help me not be so negative? Right. And I think that's huge. I think that that negativity really is just a giant brick wall and it does mm-hmm. limit us as so we look at things from an opposite perspective. So Yeah. Yeah. And so I have to ask you something I went through myself and I, I'm kind of curious to know if you went through the same thing, which is that mm-hmm. like overall, I've always been a fairly positive thinking or positive-minded person, um, but I never really thought about negative thoughts I was having and those being included in my positivity or negativity mm-hmm. until I started doing my coaching training and started working yeah. on my self-development. And I was like, holy moly, the things I say to myself in my head. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like overall, I'm like, yes, let's do this, let's go. And then, you know, the little voice in there and um, yeah. I think it's so great that your client tapped into, can you help me with my negative thinking? Because yeah. sometimes we don't even realize how it comes up. We're so mean to ourselves. Yeah. We say things to ourselves that we would never say to anyone else. I mean, and you know, I guess that's the huge problem with the internet is we really do say those things to other people now. But yeah. you know, we, we tell ourselves all these horrible things that we would never ever say to someone else. Yeah. And they're so self-defeating and it really is a process of, you know, I hate to say, you know, there's this video of this adorable little girl who jumps up on her bathroom sink and she's like, I'm full and I love my hair and I love my house. And I just think, you know what, if we were all brave enough to like jump up on our bathroom sink and cheer ourselves like that every morning, we'd be so much better off. Right? But yeah, but we don't, we're like, oh, my hair looks terrible. This outfit is awful. We just slam ourselves so much. Oh, I look so fat. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then uh, another thing about that video is like the gusto and the energy that she had and everything that she was saying, you know, and yeah. I realized that with myself too, is if, if I just think I can do hard things. No, no, no. I've got to go to, I can do hard things. I've got to really yes. believe it. And it, right. And it's a, they say, and I've seen this uh, within myself and within my clients, I try to teach them that, um, it's a process and an exercise. We always want yeah. whatever the end goal is, we want to be able to flip the switch and just have the end goal happen like that. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. And we're very instantaneous. You know, we want, yeah. we're such a, I mean, iPhones and like we can have anything we yeah. want right now or Amazon Prime, which is like magic to me. <laughs> Yes. Um, and like it just falls out of the sky into your yard. Yeah. And, um, I won't be letting go of that luxury. <laughs> I know. I know. But we are so instantaneous. And, you know, sometimes that's us of really learning if we want to have, if we want to have that change and we want to make yeah. it, there's not a quick fix. And sometimes the best thing you can do is drudge through. I mean, if it happens too quick, it's not going to stick. And if it's not just a little bit difficult, you're not going to learn from it. Very true. Otherwise, you would have already done it, right? Very true. Absolutely. Yeah. And we can't hear it enough when we're going through that process. So you had mentioned a little bit about your family and how you have um, some entre entrepreneurs in your in your family. Yeah. Um, but can you share with me maybe just thinking about some of the women in your life? Who was an example? Or maybe who instilled it, male or female, who instilled that in you? Um, to kind of get over the mental hurdles you went through as a teen and kind of to help you to have the mindset you have today? Both of my parents are very, I mean, I'm really tight with both my parents. They only live like two miles from me. We hang out. I've, um, I've said I am a 43-year-old daddy's girl. Like, I, I still am. Like, it's so, and I, a lot of times, my biggest struggle when I was a teenager was I had from probably, I remember when I was in the third grade, um, my dad would go out of town. He, he, he insurance agent for years and, um, he had all of these meetings done in Cincinnati. So he would be gone for a few days at a time, like, like two or three days. And I would always be sick. Like I would be Aww. so sick. And, um, I can remember I didn't like it, which is funny cause I teach now. Right. But I didn't like school because I had so much anxiety all the time about mm -hmm. everything. And then when I got towards middle school, you know, girls start going through puberty, their hormones go berserk, and that anxiety just blew up. And all through high school and college, I was an anxious mess. Mm -hmm. And I would call my mom to talk to me, would like talk me through it rationally, and she would like she would really be that, okay, now don't you think I would be scared if I thought this was really wrong? And I would call my dad for the exact opposite reason. I would call my dad because I wanted my dad to be tough on me and to like lay it up front. Like, and I would say, dad, I just want you to tell me I'm being stupid. Like I would literally call my dad and say, just please tell me I'm stupid for a minute. And he would be like, fine, you're stupid, fine. And, and you know, in the most loving way, because he's yeah. like, he's like, really? He's like, you just have to stop this because he didn't understand. He didn't have anxiety. But my mom, like my mom would say, okay, you know, it's going to be all right. And she was like the compassionate thing. And my dad, though, my dad was always the one that he's like. Snap out of it. Hey. Right. He's like, yeah. snap out of it. We're going to do this. And it's the same thing with anything else. Like he has always been my, um, no, this is what you need to do. You just need to take the step. You can do it. I know you can do this. Like he, he was very much my, he was kind of my coach. Whereas my mom was definitely my, you know what, if you don't, it's going to be okay. And, and, and I'm like, don't tell me I can't. And she's like, I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying if you don't, oh. it was a crazy thing, but both parents were, are, fantastic and actually my brother the one who i said has this really successful business down in indianapolis he um he is too he's i mean he's very much more like my mom but he's a great combination of my dad too because he'll be like he's like well i mean i don't see any reason why not i mean he'll he'll right. give me all of this like list of reasons of things very that I rational should. right well yes yes yeah. very rational where i definitely i mean as a teacher and a coach we tend to run more on like feelings you know feelings and emotion well why are you feeling that way and what can we do to fix it and let's talk about the next logical step yeah so i have my i know who to go to when i need my um 
kick in the butt and I know who to go to when I need just like a glass of wine and a talk. Right. right. <laughs> so what a gift. Yeah. What a gift to have that balance of support on both sides. And yeah, you, know, you knew what you needed and when you needed it. That's amazing. Right. It's great. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've so enjoyed talking to you and hearing a little more about what you oh, have going on over there in Indiana. And yeah. I'm really excited about the event that we have coming up where we'll be talking about, yeah. um, so many different things that hold women back from achieving the goals that they want to achieve. And do you, um, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but do you want to share a little bit about what you may cover on that day? I know we're sure. still, we're still kind of mapping that out a little bit, but yeah, yeah. Share, share what you have in store for us on August 17th. So I think mostly because I told you that my, my whole basis is kind of goes back to how I've used this so much with my kids over years. And when I say my kids, I mean my own kids, but I also mean the kids I teach. Um, really how food affects us. And I think I'm really going to focus on balancing what we're eating and how that affects everything from our energy level to our confidence to, for me personally, anxiety, the best word of my anxiety was what I was eating. Um, and I think just talking about, you know, how it plays into sleep and how it plays into not just weight loss. It's not mm -hmm. always, I think, you know, when we look at stress and we look at things like that, mm -hmm. our body balances itself out naturally. So I think I'm going to talk a lot about um, sugar. I'm going to talk mm -hmm. about sugar and I'm going to talk about foods that work for your body and foods that might not and how not every you know, I have a lot of friends who are like, oh, just so, so just keto. And I'm like, well, I would die on keto. So that's not for me, but for some people it does work. So a little bit of this and that, um, how your food works for you and maybe not for someone else. Amazing. Amazing. You know, I, you. I made some shifts in my diet little by little, and sometimes I like veer back, but I never did anything extremely structured or strategic. I just knew I had yeah. to get rid of certain things in my diet. And so I went from hardly being able to get up in the morning and thinking mm -hmm. I just wasn't a morning person to when my alarm goes off, I need a little like groggy wake up time, but usually I'm up now. Yeah. And yeah. that never happened until I changed yeah. a little bit of my diet. Foggy brain, yeah. when I have foggy brain, I know I need to get some better foods in my body. You know, all of these things uh -huh. that happen that interfere with accomplishing our goals, thinking through our goals, strategizing what right. we, our next step should be. I, I just, I was shocked at how much food impacted all those elements for me. So I am really excited. And by the way, yeah. that recipe you shared for the sweet potato, that was so oh, good. Pie. Was yummy. It's like pie. It's so weird. Everybody's like, oh, are you sure? And I'm like, it's fantastic. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited yeah. about this talk we had today and then what we have coming up in August. And, um, and yeah, so if you're joining us, as I said earlier, if you're joining us for the first time here, I talk to many different women, not just life coaches. So I'd love to hear from you if you'd like to chime in on what you think about this conversation. Um, how does how did this particular conversation resonate with you? And what would you like to add to that? So if you wanna leave comments below, Megan and I can pop on there and answer any questions yeah. if you have some, whether it be about food or, um, or about the topic of, of limitlessness and how that shows up yeah. for you in your life. And uh, we'd love to hear from you and see how this talk resonated with you. And um, each week, these videos come up on Friday morning. So join me there. Um, if you haven't liked this page, please like it and share it if you think it's something that would help someone else. And you can also find me on YouTube as well. So thanks for joining us today. And Megan, I'll see you soon. Thank you, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me, bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.